Welcome to our presentation on Transitions to a New School. We have this particularly in mind for those in Year 6 moving on to Year 7, but the principles apply to any year group changing schools. This presentation is best when watching with some of our other presentations, particularly what is anxiety and anxiety in the context of COVID. Our aims and objectives give you a brief outline of what we intend to cover during the presentation. This time of change is more pronounced for all our children and young people as we navigate this current pandemic. What we know about change is that it is managed better if we prepare for it. With this in mind, we have been thinking about conversations you could have with children who are transitioning from primary to secondary school this year. It draws on best available evidence from psychological research to support children and young people in their transitions. First of all, let's spend a moment thinking about how we define transition. We will all have slightly different thoughts when we hear the word transition. Here are a few others that you might associate with it. A transition is a change from one thing to the next either in action or in state of being. When we talk about transitions, we need to consider the many small ones on a daily basis and not just the life changing ones like changing schools and moving house. Some children struggle more with the subtle changes than others. It's likely that you'll know if your child struggles with transitions. At secondary school, there are many more transitions to be aware of, with changing buildings, rooms, teachers and pupils in each lesson, to name just a few. We have lots of transitions in our lives, some we notice more than others. Here are a few that as adults you have already experienced. Some will have been more memorable than others. Different ones will be different for each of us. This is an opportunity for you to have a think about the ones that you have been through, how they have felt and how you have remained resilient to the challenges. It will be helpful to think about this when considering your child's transition between schools and how they usually cope with change. Maybe have a think about the following questions. What do you think your child is thinking and feeling about returning to school or changing schools? How does transition and change impact your child? What behaviours have you observed? What emotions and thoughts have been expressed by your child? Loss in the general sense is often not spoken about when talking about transitions and change, but it is important to consider and discuss, particularly in relation to the impact that it may have on your child's emotions. Experiencing loss can create feelings of sadness and also anxiety about how things will be without a certain aspect or person that has been lost. Please refer to the slide for more specific examples. Strategies to help manage feelings of loss Encouraging children to think about and express how they feel is really important. Having designated time to talk on a daily basis is a good start. Gathering questions from your child is really important as children will fill gaps in their knowledge where anxiety likes to grow. This is also an opportunity to talk about how transitions in your life have made you feel. This will help validate and normalise those feelings for the child. Create a consistent routine. Knowing what to expect will help children to feel more control and less anxious. Helping them to identify things that are staying the same and are familiar. Even if you think they are already known by the child or obvious, it is helpful to say them out loud, reinforcing them. Being positive and talking about the future is an important part of accepting the new circumstances and being resilient to the challenges. For some children, leaving primary and moving to their new secondary school can be a big change with a feeling of loss. The activities that normally take place in the summer term help to signify the end of one stage of life and movement to the next. 
It is important that these transitions are managed well, even in the context of continued school closures. Children are already facing increased levels of stress, anxiety, change and uncertainty. They will therefore be less resilient to coping with these losses. With the recent government changes, your Year 6 children now have the opportunity to attend school and will therefore get some of the transition preparations by their primary school. This is still a family decision though, and so some Year 6 children won't be returning. Even so, in these unprecedented times, the transition activities may be very different to your previous expectations. For example, they may not be able to visit their new school or meet their new teachers in advance. Here are a few of the usual things that your year six child would experience in the summer term. Sadly, the opportunity to do the things on the usual list have either already passed or are still not possible in the current circumstances. This new list of suggestions are potential opportunities to still help your child acknowledge the loss, celebrate the achievements and transition confidently. Preparing for the new beginning. To aid transition, preparation for the change is key. Whilst we have not been able to prepare for the ending, we can still prepare for the new beginning. During this time, we can help to build resilience, coping strategies, problem solving and reduce anxieties. Alternative strategies available using technology rather than the physical strategies previously in place is a great opportunity. Your schools may have already been providing some of these. As part of this preparation, thinking about how things are communicated is important. Visual information is processed more effectively than verbal communication. Here are a few suggestions of using visual aids. Other things to consider are identifying key people. Who is their mentor or tutor? Are they going to be linking in with the Senko? Talk to them about who and how they can ask for help. You could role play this with your child. Also, identify quiet areas, places like the library or if the school have an allocated area for stress management. They may mention this on their website or it may mean that you need to ring them to find out. Practical things like practicing the new school run, walking past the school, taking pictures is also advised. Here are the known phases of transitioning. When we go through a change or transition, we are thought to need to go through these phases to become used to the new normal. Let's think about anxiety. Children may feel frightened and overwhelmed by leaving home and going into a social context, however well socially distanced, given the reinforcement they have received over recent months regarding the dangers of contracting the virus. Being anxious when we're experiencing loss, uncertainty and at a time of change or transition is normal. Hopefully you will have watched our previous videos on anxiety and anxiety in the context of COVID. If you haven't, and anxiety is something that you think you need to know more about, then please do. We explain in the other video about the flight or flight response, so you can recognise this in your child. Reinforcing safety rules, boundaries and consistent approaches will help to reduce anxiety and stress. New rules around social distancing need to be framed as do's rather than don'ts, as this helps to reduce anxiety by framing these as positive and protective of ourselves and each other. Please think about 
planning and preparing your child based on their individual needs. Managing the anxiety in a planned rather than reactive manner will help reduce the anxiety and increase their confidence in managing the new routine and expectations. When talking to your child about their anxiety, ensure that you actively listen, validate and empathise with how they are feeling. You can do this by reflecting back to them that you can see they are worried or telling them that if you were thinking those thoughts, you would feel worried too. Anxiety is a normal response to a sense of threat and it is important to normalise a child's reaction. These strategies will encourage your child to label and express their emotions, helping them to understand them better be available to talk and show that you're listening. Be curious, attentive and accepting of what they may be sharing. Some children prefer talking when distracted by an activity, like whilst playing a game or doing exercise. Social support is another key element of our resilience. You may have used technology to socialise during lockdown. Now it is an opportunity to get reacquainted with friends and peers in preparation for transition back to school. Part of problem solving is to think about the things that we can and can't control. A worry is generally something out of our control and can often be identified by what if statements. It can be helpful to write these worries or statements down and encourage them to bring them to worry time to discuss. You can also encourage your child to be proactive and resolve problems they can control. Using the table on the slide is one suggestion of how to teach the skill of problem solving. Coping with your child experiencing a problem or being distressed can be upsetting for you as a parent. It can leave you feeling helpless, sad or anxious. Here are a few suggestions for avoiding some of the common challenges that cause distress when transitioning. Be aware of the importance of social skills and social confidence when transitioning. When thinking about our current pandemic and the recommendations, we recommend thinking of it as physical distancing instead of social distancing. There needs to be a physical space in social interactions, but we should continue to encourage socialising in this new way and building connections. Feeling connected and that they fit in is key for a successful transition. If this is an area that you know your child already struggles with, it is worth you investing some time in trying to think about how it will be managed. And lastly, we'd like to recommend that communication with schools is key. Schools have a wealth of knowledge and resources and access to further resources. However, they can only support if they know that there are concerns. So if you do have concerns that anxiety is affecting your child's day to day life, we would recommend that firstly you speak to your child's school. Your child's class teacher or tutor has contact with lots of other children at the same development age as your child, so they can often give some understanding into what might be normal anxiety. However, they also spend a lot of time with your child during school time, and so may have noticed some of these difficulties themselves. Each local authority school in Surrey is connected to a prime mental health worker in CAMS, and so they can contact us for further advice if needed. You can also speak to the school nurse, homeschool link worker, ELSA or your child's GP. We know there are thousands of pages online offering support to parents and tips on managing anxiety. These web pages are from national organisations, 
who will consider the evidence base for their advice before publishing it. Here are a few books that we recommend as further reading for parents and young people. We would really value and appreciate your feedback on this presentation. If you could kindly use the QR code to complete a short two minute evaluation form. To use the QR code, hold a smartphone with the camera open to the screen without taking a photo. Your phone should suggest a link to open. This will take you to our online evaluation form. Should you have further questions about the content of this webinar, we plan to run some live question and answer sessions with CAMS professionals. This will give you the opportunity to ask questions and gain further advice. During the evaluation form, you will be asked if you would like to be contacted to attend one of these virtual sessions. If you have found this web webinar presentation helpful, please do take a look at some of our other presentations, including strategies to manage anxiety, anxiety around COVID, and returning to school after lockdown.